In this video, I want to focus on topics such as alpha decay, beta decay, positron particles, and things associated with nuclear chemistry. And so for each of these problems, feel free to pause the video and try. Now let's start with this one. What element will be produced if carbon-14 undergoes beta decay? So what do we need to do here? So first, we need to write a nuclear reaction. So we have carbon-14. Now the 14 is the mass number. And you need to use the periodic table to identify the atomic number of carbon. The atomic number of carbon is 6. And it undergoes beta decay. So you need to know what a beta particle is. So we're going to assume that it produces one beta particle. And a beta particle is the equivalent of an electron. You can write it with a B symbol or a beta symbol, or you can put an electron there. An electron has a mass of virtually zero relative to protons and neutrons. They're very small. And the charge of an electron is negative one. Carbon has six protons, so the charge of the nucleus is positive six. In order to identify the missing element, we need to make sure that the total mass and the total charge in this equation is balanced. We need to follow the principles of the law of conservation of mass and also of charge as well. So on the left side, the total mass is 14. So on the right side, the total mass has to be 14 as well. So this is 0. So 14 minus 0 is going to be 14. Now what do you think the charge or the number of protons is going to be in this element? Negative 1 plus what number adds up to 6? We know that negative 1 plus 7 is 6. And so another way you can get the answer is to take this number and subtract it by that number. So if you were to say 6 minus negative 1 is the same as 6 plus 1, which is 7. So now to identify the element, go to the periodic table and look for the element with an atomic number of 7. The number of protons identifies the element. Nitrogen has an atomic number of 7, so that is the missing element. So if carbon-14 undergoes beta decay, nitrogen will be produced. That is nitrogen-14. Number 2. Which of the following is a positron particle? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So let's go through each one. So what type of particle do we have in answer choice A, which has a mass of 0 and a charge of 0? So this particle is known as the gamma particle. It's basically a high energy photon. Now what about B? Well, P, you might think it stands for positron, but this is actually a proton. A proton has a mass of 1 and a charge of plus 1. Now what about the particle in part C, or answer choice C? So this particle represents the neutron. Like the proton, the neutron has a mass of 1, but a charge of 0 because it's neutral. Now what about this one? What does that represent? This is an alpha particle which is the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. So the nucleus of a helium atom doesn't have any electrons. It has two protons, two neutrons. And so you could write it like this. By the way, the bottom number, which is the atomic number, that is the same as the number of protons. The top number is the mass number, which is the protons plus the neutrons. So an alpha particle has two protons and two neutrons. So this is the atomic number of 2, and then 2 plus 2 gives us 4, which is the mass number. So just keep that in mind. So the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. And if you need to calculate the number of neutrons, it is the difference between the mass number and the atomic number. So 4 minus 2 gives us the number of neutrons. The last one is the positron particle. 
the positron particle is the antiparticle of an electron. An electron has a negative charge as opposed to a positive charge. So this is an electron. The positron has a positive charge, but has the same mass of an electron. It's simply just the opposite of an electron. And so if those two ever collide, this process is known as annihilation. They will form two gamma particles. Number three, what element will be produced if uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay? So now that you know how to do number one, and from number two, you know what an alpha particle is, go ahead and work on this problem. So uranium-238 has a mass of 238. And if you look at your periodic table, uranium is number 92. So that is the atomic number of uranium. So how many protons and neutrons does uranium have? Uranium has 92 protons. And to calculate the number of neutrons, it's simply 238 minus 92. So it has 146 neutrons. Now let's focus on finishing the problem. So it undergoes alpha decay. And we need to identify the missing element. So 238 minus 4 is 234. So that's going to be the mass of the unknown element. 92 minus 2 is 90. So what element has an atomic number of 90? Keep in mind, the atomic number identifies the element, not the mass number. If you look at the periodic table, if you go two spaces back from uranium, this will give you thorium. And so that is the element that will be produced if uranium undergoes alpha decay, assuming one alpha particle is emitted per uranium nucleus. Number four, an unknown element undergoes positron decay and produces neon 22. What is the unknown element? So where should we put neon 22? on the left side or on the right side. Now, because neon 22 is produced, it's a product in a reaction. And so the products, they go on the right side. So the mass number is 22. And then if we go to the periodic table, neon has an atomic number of 10. And it undergoes positron decay. So we need to put a positron particle on the right side. So it's basically the same as an electron but with a positive charge. And so now we can identify the unknown element that was on the left side. 22 plus 0 is 22. And 10 plus 1 is 11. So what element has an atomic number of 11? Which element has 11 protons? So looking at the periodic table, it's none other than sodium. So sodium is the element that undergoes positron decay and produces neon-22. Number five, mercury-201 undergoes electron capture. What element will be produced? So let's start with mercury, which has a mass of 201 based on the problem. And look at that, the periodic table. Mercury always has an atomic number of 80. Now, it undergoes electron capture. The nucleus captures an inner orbital electron. And so we need to put this electron on the left side as opposed to the right side. So what element will be produced? 201 plus 0 is 201. And 80 plus negative 1 is 79. So what's the missing element? Well, if you look to the left of mercury, you'll see gold. Gold has an atomic number of 79. And so that's the element that's going to be produced during electron capture. Now, during electron capture, the nucleus also emits gamma radiation. So this is not going to affect the mass or the charge in the equation. But typically, whenever you have a radioactive decay, 
energy is usually emitted in the form of uh, gamma radiation. So that's something to keep in mind. Number six, which of the following statements is false? Let's start with A. Alpha decay causes the mass of an atom to decrease by four. Is that true or false? Well, we've used the previous example regarding alpha decay. We've used uh, 238 uranium, or I should have said uranium 238. And when it produced an alpha particle, we got thorium 234. And so notice the mass, which was 238, it went down to 234, so it decreased by 4. Therefore, A is a true statement. We're looking for a false statement. So let's analyze every statement carefully. Now what about B? The net effect of beta decay is to change a neutron into a proton. Is that true or false? So let's use iodine-131 as an example. So as it undergoes beta decay, when it produces an electron, the missing element is going to have a mass number of 54. Negative 1 plus 54 is 53. And so what element has that mass number? Or not mass number, but that's the uh, atomic number, rather. So that's going to be xenon. Xenon has an atomic number of 54. So let's see if B is a true statement. How many protons does iodine have? Iodine have 53 protons. And the number of neutrons is the difference between 131 and 53, which is 78 neutrons. Xenon, on the other hand, has 54 protons. Recall that the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons. And the number of neutrons is going to be the mass number, 131, minus the atomic number, 54. So xenon has 77 neutrons. So notice that the number of protons increased by 1, and the number of neutrons decreased by 1. So the net effect is to change a neutron into a proton. During beta decay, we lost a neutron, but we gained a proton. And so we could say that B is a true statement. A neutron was converted into a proton. Now what about C? Electron capture involves the loss of a proton. So we've used mercury as an example for electron capture. And that was mercury 201. And we got gold as the product. So mercury has 80 protons. And 201 minus 80, that's 121. So it has 121 neutrons. Gold has 79 protons. And 201 minus 79, that's 122 neutrons. So we have a decrease in the number of protons, but we gained a neutron. So electron capture, the net effect converts, it converts a proton into a neutron. And so we could say that it does involve the loss of a proton. So C is a true statement. Now let's move on to part D. Gamma decay has no significant effect on the mass of the nucleus. Well, let's say if we have a high energy uh, carbon-14 atom. So I'm going to put a star next to it or asterisk to show that it's in the excited state. Now an atom in the excited state can release energy. And it doesn't have to lose any mass or 
change any protons into a neutron. And so notice that if an element in the excited state emits a high energy photon, the mass doesn't change and the atomic number does not change. So the number of protons and neutrons is constant. So we can say that D is a true statement. Gamma decay has no significant effect on the mass of the nucleus. The mass stayed the same. So by default, the last one has to be the answer. Positron decay causes a neutron to change into a proton. So let's see. Let's go back to sodium-22. I believe that's the example that we had earlier. And neon-22 was produced. Sodium has 11 protons and 11 neutrons. 22 minus 11 is 11. Neon has 10 protons, and 22 minus 10 is 12, so it has 12 neutrons. So one proton was lost, and the nucleus gained a neutron. So we could say that a proton was once again converted to a neutron, since we gained a neutron. So positron causes a neutron to change into a proton. That's false. It causes a proton to change into a neutron. So E is the answer for this problem.